This is the 19th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guide Batteries, X Zone Lures, Shoreline Boat and RV Repair, Spro, Gamakatsu, Big Bite Baits, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk about bass fishing. We have a new Elite Series champ, uh, and I think if you ask Brandon Polinick, he wouldn't be surprised. I don't think I'm saying his name 100% correctly. Koya Fujita. Like I said, I've talked about this guy since before the year started. I believe that if you go back into the BTL archives, there may be a show where I said he is going to revolutionize finesse fishing on the Elite Series within three years. And that was before he'd made a single cast this year. And then he came out, like I said, with the wacky rigged crab. That was bold. He did the fuzzy dice. That was unique. He did the three pound test at Oneida. That's an interesting strategy. And now he dominates on, uh, and, and he would have won by more too. He dominates on Lake Champlain, which is very interesting because Lake Champlain is an area lake, a spot lake with boulders where people say how hard it is to go to Lake Champlain, once known as the sixth or seventh great lake. I think, I, oh, our guest today would know how many great lakes there are. We got Polish Pete Trevor Lowe from Omnia Fishing. They're up in Minnesota. Six or seven great lakes. We'll just bring them in and ask. What's up, guys? Are there six or seven great lakes, Pete? Five great lakes, Champlain. Five? Considered the six. Yeah. Dang it. I was so close. I was so close to having it right. What's up, Trevor? How are you? What's going on, man? I'm good. Thank, good. Thanks for jumping on. So anyway, they go up to what, what once was considered the sixth great lake. A guy who doesn't speak any English and hasn't been here very long. And he beats all these guys who have been there over and over again. He had a, a, a four-day total weight of 86-12. Uh, and he's got an outside chance now of making uh, interesting in the angler of the year standings. I, mm -hmm. I, I was pulling that up. Uh, he is in eighth eighth place in the angler of the year standings but he's 50 some points back did you guys watch this derby i watched it intensely yes i did there's something different about champlain to me yeah. because i feel like a four and a half i i guess you could say that on all fisheries but it's just it, it on champlain it just every time they hook up with one of those four to five pounders it seems incredibly important that that fish gets in the boat Oh, big time, big time. I, More you know, so the, than like St. Lawrence River where you're like, oh, I'm on a school of them. For sure. And you you could hear that from a lot of the guys that were, you know, that missed that 10 cut or were just outside of the cut line about how many missed opportunities there were at this one where you got you can shake that off someplace like the St. Lawrence and, mm -hmm. you know, you, your average fish is just so big where there's a lot of those three plus pounders in Champlain, but there's not. Uh, the numbers of those four pounders and five pounders that there are at other smallmouth fisheries they go to. So your, your landing percentage has got to be real high at, at a place like Champlain. So uh, the, those like, to your point, those four and a half to five pounders were key, key fish. Now we've got an angler of the year race at the top, which actually matured quite nicely. There were multiple opportunities for either Cobb or Welcher to just mail it in. And then it's a, kind of a one horse race, but, but those two, I mean, are finishing within five spots of each other. It seems every tournament and we go into it's, it's Christmas time next week for every fan of professional bass fishing. Cause we go into the final elite series event of the year mm -hmm. with a, uh, six point lead for Kyle Welcher yeah. over Brandon Cobb. And then drew cook is in the mix. So you got three guys who are self-admittably not smallmouth guys at all in any way, shape, or form. And then you got Shakura Lurkin, who the last time we were there had 100 pounds. So this week, the Elite Series on uh, on the St. Lawrence River, on Lake Ontario, Thousand Islands. Uh, Hank always calls it the Seaway. 
the St. Yeah. Lawrence Seaway, which I guess is why there's all those ships there. It's shaping up to be one of the most memorable St. Lawrence River tournaments uh, since 2013. Yeah, I, I think the biggest factor in this one is if you've listened to any of the guys in their socials already and paid any attention to the weather, it looks like uh, this one could be real, real bumpy. Uh, so the the lake might not be where all the top. Oh, they're going. Oh, they're I going agree, hundred percent. Didn't uh, you try to go last time, Trevor? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I ran out to the lake, and I mean, as soon as you, uh, I forget what that that spot's called. Uh, Cape right Vincent. As as you, Cape Vincent. Yeah, as soon as you hit the mouth of the of the lake, it's just like six, seven, eight footers, you know, and so. It's it gets pretty squirrely out there. You got to be careful. You got to know what you're doing and just drive slow for sure. There's, There's some big going. factors in this though because of the fact that they, they they are predicting there might be a blow day if they cancel a day, uh, you know, and and their practice. If you only got two days of practice since they lost a day of practice because of extending the Champlain tournament, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some of the guys locked down the river instead of risking it out on the lake. Yeah, but then there's also guys. I mean, and they're so here's the difference. They're taking out of Clayton this year. Yep. So the lake is like right there. So yeah. it's like that kid with the with the don't touch the cookies. Like they're going. I mean, there's guys. <laughs> if you got guys that are doing it in the opens, you better believe when you've got livelihoods and angler of the years and yeah. incentives. There's a whole bunch of incentives at the end of the year for like highest finishing guys for different brands and stuff. So there's thousands of dollars there. Plus, then you go around down to the classic cut around that 40 mark. And this is shocking to me. But you have Clark Wenlet, Ike and Ellie and Corey Johnson in 37 38 and 39 and then we all know what happened to brandon lester there last time he's in 41st yeah. puff is in 42nd fighters in 44th and peroznik's in 45th like if you were to tell me hey these guys are battling for something going into the last one i'd be like oh yeah it's like the top six in the angler of the year and they're going up north where they always catch him but this is to make the classic they're going to the freaking lake Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, even if there's eight, nine footers, they're going out there. <laughs> Wendlet, have you yeah. seen the video that circulated last month? Wendlet yeah. was stuffing six footers in like a 1989, 18 foot 150. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see who plays it safe and who, who goes and risks, risks it. So, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what this weather does. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which we're going to get into that today. Omnia, uh, cutting edge when it comes to uh, online tackle purchasing, but also possibly some things out there that like, should those anglers want to see exactly what that wind is doing? If they mm -hmm. want to go to like the hardest part on Lake Ontario, Omnia <laughs> might be able to, 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 help, to, to help them out with that. Uh, so we'll get, uh, we'll get into that. Also a little bit of a show and tell uh, we're going to talk about some of the baits that have gotten the job done on the Northern swing. Now, has, has anything like really sexy jumped off the page this year between uh, the BPT uh, up on the Bay and the past elite series in the opens, or are we just seeing a, I guess I would say a shift in productive baits. I feel like a couple new baits have maybe entered, entered the playing field. Yeah. I don't know if it's so much, at least what they're sharing with us uh, so much uh, the baits it's, it's that category of baits is starting to shine and guys are getting better and more efficient at fishing it. I, I, we're certainly not breaking any news here that forward facing sonar is dominating these tournaments. It's all everybody's talking about. So that hanging a bait to rig moping, however you want to call it is becoming the most dominant tech tactic in the, in the, uh, on the pro circuits, but, I think what you're going to see now is people refining the baits that are currently out there. Um, do you want me to jump into some of that right now? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I guess probably the hottest thing I think is going to happen because timing was perfect on this uh, um, is you're going to see some of the traditional hanging style baits get downsized a little bit and probably the most popular soft bait for the past two years for, Hanging a bait has been the scented jerk shads from Z-Man. Uh, literally yesterday, the three and a half inch version landed with us. They've, it's been a four inch. It's been what Gussie's won his tournaments on. It's the most natural looking bait 
when you're hanging it. It's the easiest to fish, in my opinion, if you're new to this because of the buoyancy of the plastic. It makes it sit horizontally. So even if you're not directly over the bait, if you're if you're pitching out to them now, which you're seeing a lot of people do, uh, it, it makes it a lot easier to present the bait in a more natural fashion because it's buoyant. And now they've got a smaller size than that, which had been dominated by this one right here, the Baby Z2 from Strike King. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a three and a half version. It's also a Laztec, uh, but now you've got a scented version from Z-Man as well uh, in the scented jerk shed. So these two would be like your low hanging fruit. I think you've seen probably the most money in that technique get one off these two baits right here. Um, and we've got both of those right now, but it was funny to your point, but Trevor messaged me on my way in this morning and said, we want to talk about some of the baits that have been playing in these last two tournaments. And I said, great, you know, we're, we're, we're in a good position with all that. And I showed up to work and I looked and you see how much over this week of the elite series event, how much of this stuff is just sold like crazy. Like our <laughs> smeltinator stock went from excessively deep to like, bam, we're out of a whole bunch of colors and stuff. So you're gonna have to sign up for your notifications on that. But the smeltinator jig is obviously Gussie super popularized. Yeah. Thing. We saw a lot of anglers, even at Champlain using this as the jig of choice for hanging a bait on your forward facing sonar. But there's what makes that so good. Is it just because it was the first to the party or one of the first to the party, or is there anything that's, cause I mean, that's a, it's a easy to, I, I mean, I would say duplicate, but that thing continues to stand the test of time amongst the top level anglers. You always see, hear that smeltinator jig. And I think it's because the hooks hasn't been easy to get for a lot of other jig manufacturers. Okay. Uh, the the most popular size, I think it's a 604 Gami. It's like a one -aught. Uh, You know, they buy up as much of it as they possibly can. And it's used in a couple other jigs for different styles of jigs. So it's been hard for other manufacturers to kind of get their hands on that hook. And obviously the anglers have a ton of confidence in that. But to your point, there are some other brands out there like Matt Steffen's guppy head. Yep. Uh, you've got the green fish came out with this one. Uh, and I did see some anglers play with this one. Oh, that looks uh, good. This is, this is the bad little, sh bad little shad. Yeah. Brian news, bad little shad. Okay. Uh, we, we've got a bunch of these as a lot of cool minnow colors in these, yeah. but very similar bait. Uh, very easy to keep horizontal. Um, that's the, the whole key with this, right? Is the horizontal. If if you hold up that smeltinator too, it's yep. a 90, not, let me make sure I get this right. 90 degree line tie on. Exactly. And you're, and you're seeing that making that presentation of that bait being horizontal in the, in the water column is why the Elastec plastics have been so popular. Um, but we've because seen, they float. we've seen some anglers making adjustments to this. That's the funnest part about this to me, as much as we're all complaining about staring at guys backs for days on mm -hmm. end forward facing sonar fishing it's uh you kind of touched on it this morning we were chatting before we went on here uh is we don't even know exactly what everybody's did on champlain because guys are holding it tight because they're going to the saint lawrence we're going to see the same tactics get played uh what adjustments are being made now that all these anglers even the southern anglers that weren't hanging baits like gussie was his whole life or the japanese anglers that have been doing it what adjustments are they making in their presentations? And we've seen stuff like uh, Matt Stefan come out with that hover rig. Uh, yeah, hold that, hold that up a little bit yeah. more. So, so when Matt was in studio, he actually gave me some of those, uh, yeah. a pile of them. And I have not unlocked the magic of it, but I put it on a bunch of different stuff. Like mm -hmm. he flips with it. He strolls with it. Yep. He casts to fish with it. He fishes brush with it. Him and Johnny Schultz designed that for core tackle. Yep. Uh, but there's something with that action. I caught some actually around bridge pilings at Wheeler, which will tell you just how dialed in that I was fishing bridge pilings at Wheeler. <laughs> but I, I was actually very impressed with that, uh, with that jig head. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a sign that you see that people are adjusting and it made me you know, when, when Trevor told me you wanted to kind of chat some of this stuff, some sleeper stuff, I don't mm -hmm. think a lot of people have caught in caught on to yet, but I don't know. This is just my observation. Yep. I guess I'm calling, calling it out what I saw. I don't have any details on it. Cause I have not got a chance to speak to Koyo Fujita about his win. And uh, I don't know if I will get a chance to speak to him about it, but just my observations from watching him. Uh, it seemed to me, and I, I think if you look back at some of the footage, a lot of anglers would agree with me that he was not fishing 
a bait hanging directly in front of the boat as much no. as a lot of guys were that his bait was out in front of him quite a ways. And man, when he set the hook and we're all making the assumption that Koyo's fishing much lighter line than everybody else, mm -hmm. much more finesse than everybody else. But somehow this, this kid was wrenching on him and they seemed to just be on the surface within two cranks of the handle. And to me, I'm watching this the whole time going, Oh, he's, he's might not be fishing as deep. Now I could be wrong, uh, but it just, just my plain observations. I think you're starting to see people fish out away from the boat for these fish that are suspended down there in, in deeper mm -hmm. water, these pelagic roaming fish, trying to get them to come up to the baits. And there's some different jig heads and different style hooks like this little gem right here, which I just started fishing what with. What is that? Too. So this is an out barb jig head from, from Ichikawa fishing. Ichikawa makes some of my favorite hooks out there. Um, but this is a jig head with an out barb uh, barb on the hook. Shank. Like the so, mega bass hooks. Like you got it. The mega okay. bass hook. Which are a love-hate relationship with a lot of anglers I get because you damage them so easy, but when do you damage them? You damage them on trying to take them out of the fish. Hey, do right? you know anybody who's ever gotten one of those buried in them? Yes, yes How I do have. you get the out barbs out? Because you yeah. can't line trick it, can you? No, it, it. I've seen someone do it aggressively enough to get it Ooh, out. And it rips. It rips. Um, oh, so it's a pushback through kind of deal or, oh. or, or visit your local urgent care. I've um, always wondered that because it's always cold and you're always fumbling with it at mm -hmm. the side of the boat. And I'm always like, I wonder what would happen if one of these suckers goes like through the glove and into you. And yep. now I know. Anyway, continue. Sorry, I didn't mean to sidebar you with that. I just have always wondered that. No, but that's honestly, I'm glad you brought that up because that's what I was going to say is, but when you look at a jig head like this, it's got a little bit longer shank on it. And it, it's a, I'm trying, I'm trying to get it up to the screen here for everybody to see. Um, that looks great. A little bit longer shank on it, but it's, so it's going to help you with that horizontal presentation with a, with a traditional salted soft plastic. That's not as buoyant. Right. But also what aids you in that is if you're fishing something with a flatter belly on it, I'm trying to think of something I got here that with a flatter belly on it, like maybe this Great Lakes Finesse flat cat, uh, you can pull it kind of forward towards yourself, keep it up higher in the water column. But with that out barb, if the fish comes up and strikes it from the side or gets a light bite, and you saw a lot of anglers at Champlain lose a lot of fish on their jig heads. Yeah. Uh, uh, this will aid you in landing those fish. If you're fishing the bait, not straight up and down, you're fishing it out away from yourself with lighter line and a spinning rod, and you don't get a hard hook set into them. Uh, if you just pull into them and load them up a little bit, or they grab it and run off with it, you're going to get a better hook. Uh, you know, you're going to landing percentage will go up with this hook. But to, to Banger's point there, <laughs> be careful, because landing a smallmouth is scary enough but if you're going to grab at this thing with your hand, you get this jig hook in your hand, you're going to have problems. Uh, there it is right there. But it just goes to show you that there's there's some different ways to fish this stuff. I also believe that this style jig head's getting fished a lot more too. And Hold that's and I think second. you're going to see this play at the St. Lawrence. And that's a mix between your spy baiting uh, technique and fishing an Okashira screw head like this where you can actually cast this thing out to some fish on your forward facing sonar and roll it over the top of their heads and get them to come up and grab at it uh, with that added attraction of the little blade on it. But you can fish the little baby Z2s or the Great Lakes finesse plastics that are getting so popular with all the anglers. Uh, um, and you can fish it in different uh, levels of the water column on your forward facing sonar. That's kind of the secret thing is that little Great Lakes finesse drop yeah. minnow the oh, neutrally yeah. buoyant drop minnow on that screw head or a tiny underspin. You got it. The little underspins are playing like crazy. Uh, and I think that's not just because the added attraction of the blade. I think that extra weight on that little finesse presentation helps you keep it mm -hmm. in whatever uh, column of the water body you're trying to fish. You know, if you're staring at those fish that are cruising eight feet off the bottom, it's not super easy with a 16th ounce jig head <laughs> to just sit there and keep that bait in front of that fish's face, especially in two and a half footers and the bow's coming up and down in the boat and everything. If you've got something like a little underspin uh, that's got some added you know, weight to it with that blade spin underneath it, it's easier to keep it in front of that fish's face or right above his head. Uh, I know that I Ishikara, Ishikawa, Ichikawa. screw lock, 
the that jig had the first time it was it really came to my attention would have been the uh elite series that carl jacobson won on 10 killer chris aldane it was a real tough bite no one really was able to figure out the small the the uh the shallow smallmouth and he was putting a little uh has dong shad on the back of that thing and yeah. just slow rolling it across the pea gravel up there and it was a mix between uh it was a mix between a spy bait and a swim bait and a Demiki rig all in one and, and and he caught some really nice ones yeah he did and and i think uh, especially with the limited practice these guys have, you're still going to see a little bit of that moving bait stuff play at least day one in the tournament. Now, if you're a guy like Corey Johnson and Chris Johnson and you're, you're dotted up, you know where you're going, you know where you're going to hit, you, you know, you're going to see Corey and Chris's a little CJ smashers play there. That's a neutrally buoyant little Ned style bait. Mm -hmm. They they've got location, location, location stuff where they can drop on those fish. They can locate those schools. Uh, but I do think you're going to see people moving around a lot uh, with some sort of screw head under spins, spy baits like that to locate those schools of fish because uh, they, they do have a pretty limited practice. I, I that, yeah, you pointed that out uh, in the beginning of the show is that uh, the elites, because there was a day canceled at Champlain, they now have two full days of practice instead of three mm -hmm. with the lake in play and uh i did not know i didn't see what it was going to be in practice here let me see what it practice is supposed to be pretty they'll mm -hmm. be able so they'll be able to move around yeah yeah yep today four mile an hour wind 78 for the high they call that uh uh chamber of commerce weather mm -hmm. and then wednesday seven miles an hour oh no five miles an hour yeah so they'll be able to move around oh they've they've kind of drop down yeah saturday is going to be a interesting saturday and sunday nine ten mile an hour winds but uh that's a big place to figure out in two days but i think it you is. are going to see you know I, I i ran through this one time before there's like 11 baits that have played on the st lawrence which is shocking when you think about it but there are really some cool stuff that has played in the past i mean we're introduced to the hair jig the spy bait yep. big spinner baits chatter baits uh jigs drop shots ned rigs Demiki. Uh, the only thing I've never seen on the St. Lawrence is a crankbait play, which I don't think it. Yeah. Now that you say that, I can't think of any time a crankbait's played in. Like ever, like not even yeah. out on the lake. Which is kind of weird, actually. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen a little bit of top water, but not historically. But I think that the Demiki is going to be the deal this time around. I do too, just because, yep. uh, you know, uh, it. it we're we're learning that hunting with that with, with pan optics and and any forward facing sonar units is is dominating right now. And if you're not doing it, you're losing. So uh, I, I think you're right. I think you're going to see a lot of baits hanging. And I do think Coyle, you call it hanging. Yeah, hanging a bait or moping or Demiki rigging. Yeah, we called it moping up here because of Gussie for years. He was winning a lot of tournaments up on Rainy yeah. Lake up here uh, on the Canadian border with Minnesota. Uh, and that the lenders kind of coined that moping and we called it moping forever, but obviously, uh, at, from the elite series perspective, it was called the Mickey rigging for a long time, but, uh, I don't know. I've heard hanging a bait quite a bit now. So what do you call it, Trevor? Yeah, I think hanging a bait is probably right. us Northern Minnesota guys. That's, that's the term that we hear the, the most, the term that we use the most, but I mean, the Mickey, I, I don't. I can't remember exactly how Demiki became the term. I just well because it was the that. actual it was Demiki. Demiki rig. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, that's a, right. it's a yeah. Cinco. It's yeah. just like Cinco. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was that that tournament. I think Wheeler, Wheeler yeah. won in like Tennessee River or something like that. Hundred percent. Back in the day. So does that play on Malax? It has. has not... it, it has more now that the boulders are so beat up. Um, yeah, you, know, you can't just drop a drop shot or a net rig on every boulder now and pick off the dumb one that lives there. Uh, it now that you're getting off the the breaks and stuff. That, that yes, that it is playing a little bit now. Is this the first technique that you can remember that is? I mean, this technique was around. It was mm -hmm. done before forward facing sonar. It was done with 2D over productive areas, but I. I, th I feel like this entire category 
has been spawned because of the forward facing sonar a hundred percent. Like, I mean, this whole industry of the jig heads and the baits and all the whole style is forward facing sonar. Yep. 1000%. There's, and that's why I think it's going to be those minute little details of things Mm -hmm. like an out barb, things like, a, you know, different buoyancy levels of plastics and things like that. You're going to have to have a whole arsenal of stuff to adjust to the attitude of the fish that you're watching them react to on forward facing sonar. Like, do I have to keep the baits above their heads? Do I have to run it past them really fast with a heavy bait? Uh, do you know, there's all sorts of different ways. I think we're going to adjust our tackle to it. Mm -hmm. And I've got, I said, I got the Omnia site pulled up there that just kind of shows all the different. Have you messed with that? Uh, queen tackle live scope tungsten jig head yet that's supposed to be like I'm, i've got it pulled up right now that's supposed to show up more like on I, your scope. I haven't personally but i i was invited recently when i was out in michigan there to go down uh to some deep deep lakes down in the middle of the country there and do that this winter so that'll be my first foray into fishing deeper than I would say 25 foot with <laughs> in my life with a, with a Demiki rig or any sort of dropping with sonar. So we did it on table rock mm-hmm. like four years ago is mm-hmm. the first time I was introduced to it on deep timber. Yeah. in no late November. And it was mm-hmm. shocking a how deep those fish get and B how aggressive they are in cold water deep. Like, yeah. you know, you think, I would talk and you watch it like, you you know, you're right above them and you're sitting there and you're, you know, shaking it. And you're like, OK, I'm going to do a twitch where the one tail goes like this and that. Then I'm going to dart it up. And and like I was pitching this thing out to a treetop and you're watching them come up, follow it down, swim all around it like it. They're convinced that th- that thing's real. Yeah, well, I'm sure they haven't. It's probably one of the few places they haven't seen a lot of baits is when they're down that deep. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they have now because everyone does it on uh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. Table Rock. Uh, if you want to get some of your own for facing sonar, I got to do this. I made a banner, and we still have a code. Mm-hmm. They do that right. So if you have an order from Omnia before, there's a, a slight incentive: fifteen percent off your first purchase mm-hmm. at omniafishing.com. And then at checkout, just use code capital BTL23. There you go. That all sounds good to me. All right. <laughs> Any other? Uh, let's r- r- run through the rest of the baits, and then we'll take a break and come back, and then we'll get into the, the innovative stuff. Not that this stuff isn't innovative, but Trevor's been sitting there just like, okay, another bait, another bait. He's been waiting for his time oh, for his baby. I'm- so. Uh, I'm, I'm always i'm always down to just hear tackle conversations all right. so any anything else it. that we uh that we need to have on our radar pete yeah i think uh i think the hand poor guys are going to get into this game and i think that's going to play the life oh i never Matt even Bond thought of stuff. that um this is just personal for me like i just have to throw uh i i have uh quite honestly, one of the worst Ned rig fishermen in the history of mankind. Uh, and I have had most of my success <laughs> in the last few weeks, uh, fishing this little thing. This is that little missile baits, uh, robo worm collaboration hand pour, the small one, the strike King's got the filler worm. I think you're going to see a lot of people cutting down the six inch type hand pours and stuff. Uh, just playing with them in the tank here and looking at it, the, the life, like, you know, stuff you get out of the hand pour worms is going to be huge. So I think if, if you're trying this technique out, I, I don't think you should turn your back on some of the West coast stuff, all those hand pour worms, uh, cutting those down and trying different techniques with that. And I think you've seen Schmitty just smash everybody on those hand pour style, whether it's on a Nico rig or a, or a net head. Um, our most popular net head here has been Josh Douglas's perfect net head. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's roll it, the sides are curved. So it stands the bait up a little easier, but even for hanging a bait, the shanks are long enough on it that I think it, it works really well for that technique as well. And one other one, I, I think it's slept on quite a bit here is this little thing here, especially in those great lakes fisheries or any of the small fisheries is, uh, this is a bait. Uh, the by heck a, is a, that? Yeah. It's a bait by Nashini here. Uh, 
it's like a willow cat. Uh, they got them in just green pumpkin and black, but they're, um, they're heavily, heavily salted and almost looks like chum in the water and they hit the water. A lot of flakes kind of flutter off this thing as you shake it around down there. But, uh, you know, I would, I would encourage people to just get creative if they can find baits that are a little flatter on the bottom with a wider head to hook into, uh, they can get a lot more action. It's easier to keep them horizontal and a little different than just the Elastec baits. If what is that again? This is a uh, hold the whole package up. Yep. This is a Nishini Lure Works. Namazu. Okay. Am I, is this like a thing that everyone knows about? And I'm the only one who's never heard of this. So now this is a little juicy one. I thought I'd just, share. I mean, could you not do like a micro, uh, Nico rig on that too? You absolutely could. Yeah. Without a doubt. I think hold, that, the, hold the bait up again. Cause it looks like it's got, it's got elements of a Ned rig. It's got elements of a Demiki rig. And then they were like, eh, let's kind of make it look like a catfish. It looks like a little willow cat, which is a bait fish. What's bait. a willow cat? Uh, it's a popular bait fish in the walleye tournament world. They actually, I've if never they're available at bait shops, people will buy them and uh, fish them. Uh, so it's, it's a really, really, really cool uh, bait that, uh, trust me, I just pissed two people off big time sharing this, but I've kept it quiet for a couple of years. <laughs> That's uh, what we do at BT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we piss uh, people off. <laughs> yeah, we piss people off. But this thing's been really, really, really effective for was great. It looks huge on the camera here, uh, but it, it's 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 a pretty uh, pretty good bite size bait. If you're looking for that bigger bite, hanging a bait uh, or fishing, like you said, you could fish it on a little Nico rig. There's there's different ways to fish this bait. You got to get creative now. I think with the forward facing sonar. So um, is that a willow cat? That is a little willow cat. It looks like. Okay. Can you roll the picture up a little bit. Uh, possibly here. Let me. Uh, yeah, you guys don't need to see my, my attempt to do that. There's a willow cat. That's what we're talking about. Yep. Hold on a second. Oh, oh, you are about to love this picture. Oh yeah. That's a willow cat, and then a willow cat, and then hold the bait up again. Yep. Are you really gonna get in trouble? Am I just really hammering the point home here? <laughs> I didn't think we could have to kind of brush by it and say, "Here's a bait to try." But uh, hey. yeah. But, this is a cool little bait that. And where are these? These are like strictly a northern deal. Yeah, they're they're re they're uh, residents in a lot of the rivers uh, that are all Great Lakes tributaries, uh, the Mississippi River, all that stuff. Uh, it's a pretty cool way. Uh, see, there we go. I already got one person pissed off. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just a good bait fish imitator that not a lot of people key in on this bait fish. Uh, th this this presentation but i think obviously this thing can mimic a goby we see what all the crawfish style baits uh that don't even look like a crayfish still get bit and all that stuff so just a good natural forage uh mimicker that i don't see a lot of people mimicking i see them mimicking shad bluegill gobies crayfish yeah. nobody's mimicking little little bullheads and catfish and what's the name of that again i'm going to type it in real quick this is the nashini namazu N I S H I N. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, I think I found it. Yeah. Take it easy. Let me get some before you go. Is Wait. that it? That's is it. That the five or the four inch? This is the four inch right here. Oh, that's reasonable too. It's like three bucks less than a pack of uh, flatworms. Yeah. And you can drop shot it. You can yeah. Ned rig it. You can put it on a football head. Kind of ruins the whiskers, but. Uh... Oh, that finesse like uh, Travis Manson's little Beast Coast football head. You can put that on the back of it. Think of the hover rig. Think of a lot of yeah. different ways that thing can play. Oh, yeah. You could fish it. And it comes in a five and a four inch. Mm -hmm. It's a big bite getter. So maybe end of the day kind of thing. If you're swinging with the forward facing sonar. So I feel like the last time I got this much hate mail, I talked about the, uh, I mean, I could just from this, like, come on, dude. Like, you know, yeah, I, know. <laughs> uh, I did a deal with Gerald Swindle and he was throwing the old uh, Zoom Ed Chambers baits and he had like a little uh, mutt. Yeah, and, that uh, one or whatever. Yeah, and I kind of got cued in on that. And I had a buddy who does like one of the wood bait uh, 
who does one of the wood bait forums. And he's like, I don't know what you did, but you just pissed off a bunch of people on the forum. Right. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you apparently talked about this. And he's like, anybody who's selling them loves you. Anybody who's trying to buy one hates you right now. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I took sure. like a month to cool off. <laughs> I just saw my phone light up about four times. So I don't even want to look what the text say. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, what else you got there? Uh, that's really kind of about it for as far as just baits that I think, you know, pointing out just the different style jig heads that I think you could, you should be trying. Uh, you know, we do a ton of golden eye stuff. Uh, for, Wait, what is that? That's the Josh Douglas's golden eye. Oh, okay. It's, yep. It's another, another version of kind of that smeltinator family, that yep. kind of deal where you could hang it with a bait with it, or you can swim it. Um, you know, I, uh, that's about it. I got for, that that category i guess of forward facing sonar stuff all right any other baits that you guys pulled before we take a break and then come back and talk about the uh, premium pro that's about it i got for baits that i pulled to show you. other than obviously as you guys know the great lakes finesse stuff oh been... yeah is that hard that's a hard to get b impossible to keep in stock and c yeah. the smallmouth well bait i was gonna... of 2023 I was going to brag when I was on my way in here when Trevor said that because we, we got a, a boatload of it last week, I believe, and I got here this morning to pull it, and, like, all the drop minnows were gone. <laughs> uh, luckily, though, if you if you click the notify me next to them, uh, I did get informed after I blew a gasket when I saw they were already all gone uh, that we have a whole bunch more on the way. So uh, sign up for those notifications. We'll email you as soon as they get scanned in, probably later this week or next week. Yeah, super easy. So I will point out on those, and I think you'll agree with me on this, smaller than anticipated when you actually get them in your hands. Mm -hmm. Like that flat cat thing, it's Tiny. legit looks like, like a crappie jig. Yeah. But those guys know what the heck they're talking about. Yeah, no, it's, it's no joke. It's definitely a bite getter. It's a limit getter kind of bait for sure. Uh, here, for example, is a this is a two aught hook and a net head. That's and here, here's the bait. I'll hold it up. To like the, you can't even really uh, fit. Like yeah, it's yeah. it is like the very, if I had it threaded up um, on the, the deal there. It'd be the too big. It would almost come out of the tail. So just goes to show you this thing's pretty small, but yep. these things are catching them like crazy. And the same with the two point seven five drop minnow. You don't even want to know what I'm gonna do to crappie starting in October and November <laughs> with, with this thing right here. Like you, like you don't even want to know. Yeah. I think that's kind of a trend you're starting to see in the, uh, the small mouth world though, is that downsizing because, you know, back in the day, I feel like that 4.3 Kai tech was the size and then it went down to the 3.8 on a three eighths, uh, ounce head and then now you've got you know guys going to the 3.3 and all the way to the 2.8 and you're starting to see that play on the great lakes quite a bit um you know these guys are they're getting smaller and smaller with their baits and then you know to the to the whole great lakes finesse point you've got that their little craw which is like a 2.5 <laughs> or something like that it's a tiny little deal but it, it catches them for sure it's like the size of a quarter that mm -hmm. craw yeah, it's 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 tiny. You know, it's you you would never think like something like that would would play or even get seen in the water. But I mean, that thing just flat out catches them for sure. Oh, you have yeah. them in stock in the smoke clear purple flake. Yeah, that two point one me, inches. That one to get me in more trouble than the little willow cat imitator. <laughs> this will. Yeah, that one's been catching them for quite a while. Uh, way before Great Lakes finesse blew up. Yeah, and they're put they're putting it on a ball head jig and mm -hmm. dragging it like a Ned, but just dragging it. That was part of the was it the thirty? How much did it weigh? Thirty. Thirty something pound bag out of Saint 30, Lawrence. Thirty one, thirty two, or something. Two like pound that. bag out of the Saint Lawrence. Uh, I said I met the Great Lakes Finesse guys. Uh, we're gonna be doing some stuff with them on day four uh, on BTL with the uh, Pradco taking over uh, Great Lakes Finesse this past year. But I got yep. to meet them at uh at uh I iCast. And they know their stuff and passionate about it too. Kind of like Simonton. Remember when we had uh yeah. talked about Michael Simonton? Yeah, I went yeah. so oh uh cool story. I went and uh fished with my dad on Erie with Michael Simonton. And uh when we dropped dropped 
dropped the boat off. He let me keep my boat at his house. He's like, Hey dude, you want to see the, you want to see the shop and all that? And I was like, absolutely. So, uh, got to see where he pours it all, where he makes everything, where it all comes out. And it's, a. It's like a 15 by 10 outbuilding that he has decked out with all sorts of air vents. Cause the first time I was there, he just moved into the house and he was doing it in like a dimly lit basement. Like it looked like, <laughs> like there might be someone chained up in the corner and now he's got it out there with all the air vents and stuff and he's got it all packaged. And he's like, you know, this is, you know, earmarked for Omnia and this is going to a little tackle store. And it, it's super cool to see. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of his for sure. All right. We're going to take our first break of the show. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get into the uh, ways to find where to throw the baits we just talked about, I guess is the best way to do that transition because, That's a good transition, uh, yeah. you know, there's some apps out there. Uh, and then Omnia is jumping into the game with their premium pro and a lot of different options to help cut down the time it takes. And it, you can also use this stuff to keep you safe to figure out where you do want to go, where you don't want to go. But uh, we'll let Trevor dive into that. It is BTL. What's today? Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. Tuesday. It's oh. like all day long. Tuesday, 8-22, August 22nd. Guys from Omnia, we'll be back right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, Nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry leading design coupled with tournament winning performance. The Puma STS from BassCat. Feel the rush. Everything you need, one legendary brand. Top one on Strike King. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting beatdownoutdoors.com. Elite Series Pro Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polinick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different. And really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic, that gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.xzonelures.com and check them out for yourself. Uh, welcome back, BTL. Talking with Polish Pete and Trevor Lowe from Omnia. And I do like to remind everyone that there's only one man on this three-person panel who has fished the Bassmaster Classic. And it's not me or you, Pete. Oh. Uh, 
There we go. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for the guy. I did want to point out also when it comes to a uh, small base, you could do that. Uh, you saw the X zone uh, ad there. I had a chance to, uh, I gave, did a giveaway at, where I actually mailed them out within a month after people won them, which I was very proud of. Uh, but the new stealth invader, like a little upside down yeah, yeah. tail on it. Uh, Polynix been using it. And then that's a really under underrated, you know, you just think drop shot, but that's an underrated ball head bait too, that you can use for that same technique. Oh yeah. Especially for hovering baits over fish's head. moving. Yeah. Them. That thing is perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really cool little bait there that I think, uh, I think Polynix will be in the mix. And I think that that, that bait right there might, become a little bit more difficult to get after next week depending on who, who does what well because you've got you've got some x zone guys yeah. uh carl and brandon who i both expect to do well yeah they're fishing well too that though that thing will do really well another bait though that it'll surprise you how small it is is definitely a, in a finesse category of like a little boot tail for sure uh Nick, and this is it for these guys wanting to get into the finesse. I want to get into the Great Lakes finesse stuff. Anyone have any tips on fishing baits, that small rigging options, depths? As a as a rule of thumb, I don't think you want to go above. Like So the whole key to this is fighting a jig head that has the weight, but a small mm -hmm. enough shank, right? Like you want yeah. to stick around with like bait, a jig heads that are specifically designed for this technique and not just go get a random jig head because it's all about the action of these baits am i wrong on that no not at all and they make it easy that they, they do have their own jig head that we carry that that kind of help you out just to know like hey this will work with with a lot of the baits it's a shorter shank smaller little finesse jig head but i think a lot of the baits uh are kind of easiest right off the bat uh to just kind of get used to the actions and see how they perform with a, on a drop shot just nose hooking them even the little believe it or not that little craw mm -hmm. on a drop shot uh, especially during the spawn uh, just throw that out there is a pretty killer little bait um uh but they're they're pretty simple to rig uh with just nose hooking them at, at first kind of get seeing how it size hooks you want in them and then uh, great lakes finesse does have jig options for you to make it easy yeah, I think one thing I'll add to that is uh, I'm going to piss off a lot of people by saying this, but oh, stop pizza already. It yeah, <laughs> it all stop, uh, stop throwing it on a bait caster. Throw it on a spinning rod, please. You know, I and I know the BFS craze and six pound test and everything like that, but you know, you lose that that's that nice smooth drag if you you go with a bait caster. So if you're going to be throwing light line, you're going to be throwing those light wire hooks and those tiny little you know one out hooks definitely keep it on a, on a spinning rod it, you did piss a lot of people off with that statement but yep <laughs> it's amazing to me how you. they find it how the uh, how those fish can find such a small bait but i think we're learning especially with forward facing sonar that we're not using them and they're not using them as search baits. They're using them as feeding baits. Mm -hmm. They're not reaction baits. These are baits that the fish are, are feeding. And this is matching the size and shape of being, yeah, sometimes they eat the giant rusty crawfish like that, like that one, like they do on St. Yeah. Clair and stuff. But as a whole, I mean, it's much safer, much easier to eat those little crawfish and mm -hmm. those, you can catch six inch gobies and yeah, you can catch them on that, but they like those little, two and a half three inch go and it and when you can put that bait in front of them your your bite ratio and your hook to land ratio as far as commitment for that fish goes through the roof is i think kind of what we're learning especially with those minnow baits yeah uh you know with the, a few exceptions it's also interesting a lot of those minute the same baits that i'll use the term that you're hanging mm -hmm. or moping i love using those new terms for me yeah. uh <laughs> they're also threading them onto drop shot hooks you know a uh, one odd and two odd uh, drop shot, you know, cover hooks. Uh, we saw that get really big a couple years ago on St. Clair when they're dealing with different bait fish. And I think you're going to continue to see those baits on drop shots threaded on for hookup ratio. Mm -hmm. All right, Trevor, uh, let's talk premium pro here. One second. Let me give you, uh, there you go. You got the big screen now. Uh, you am. sent me, you sent me some stuff. Uh, I've been looking at it, and it just it, it amazes me how you can now have stuff that you're like, you know, five, even three years ago, you were like, man, it would be really nice if, and now it exists. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of people are familiar with our app. Uh, well, first, they're familiar with our platform, but some some don't know that we have an app, but we've gone even further beyond that now. And we have this new app subscription called Premium Pro. People, uh, they know of our premium membership, which is uh, 29 bucks a year, free shipping on all your orders, you know, 10% back on your purchases, everything like that. Uh, but now we've added a, a subscription model, which is called Premium Pro. And Essentially, what that gives you access to is everything that premium has, plus all these brand new innovative map layers uh, that get showcased on your phone for you. We've got uh, I sent you some screenshots. We've got different map layers. Uh, we've got water temperature, which is uh, derived through satellite uh, satellite data, satellite imaging. Um, then we've got water clarity, you know, wind direction, wind speed. We can track storm cells, lightning strikes. Um, we we work with uh, CMAP to get bottom hardness, as you can see there on various bodies of water. So you can see uh, water uh, contour layers as well. And you can pair that uh, with your bottom hardness map layer to see if this particular turn or this particular point actually has hard bottom or if it's, if it's not. Um, and then on top of that, you got vegetation layers. So you can see where certain grass is growing in different parts of the lake. If, you know, the south end is going to have more vegetation than the other, uh, but super, super awesome features that we have. And we're constantly improving on these every single day. Um, if you want to pause there, go back, go back one slide. Uh, right there? Nope. Go to the, right the one with the river. Right there? Go right there? one more to the right. That one right there. So, okay, I was wondering what the heck this one is because this one okay. makes no sense to me. Yep. So this this is our water water clarity uh, map. Oh layer. wow! So this is pretty cool. Yep. This is uh this is taken directly from here in Minnesota. So that blue river that kind of goes north from Prescott north that's the Saint Croix River here right on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin. And uh, if you're from here, you know that that water's pretty stained, but it's generally pretty clear. And then if you look to the left there, uh, to the west, that's where the Mississippi comes in. And right at Prescott is where the Mississippi River hits the St. Croix River. And there is a very, very distinct mud line that you get right there. So it's pretty cool to see that, um, you know, we've got those uh, various layers uh, that we can use to help you break down a body of water from home. You know, you can see where certain mud lines are, certain uh, different water clarities uh that's the arkansas river I, I saw that firsthand when i was down there fishing the opens and uh you know that's i can't remember where exa what exactly that river is called but that's basically mm -hmm. you know that that river coming down to fort gibson hits hits the, the main Canadian. arkansas river yep and it you just have a huge mud line there um and then if you go to the next slide everybody's familiar with 10 killer and, and you can see how clear 10 killer is and that's completely highlighted in a different color gradient to show that you know that water is much clearer than than everything else around it so yeah there's the um, river there's the river stuff down there yep exactly so and then there's yeah really cool stuff uh like i said you know if you're you're fishing a body of water and you're trying to figure out where clear water is or where muddy water is you can do that and then here you've got contours paired with bottom hardness uh so that you can see which uh you know Various contour changes, points, humps, anything like that actually so has hard is, bottom or not. I don't know. I don't know what lake this is. Is this a popka? No, that that lake is uh, oh, that's man. Halstead's Bay, which is up here in Lake Minnetonka. So, oh, okay. So this is yep. hard spot. So like right here where I'm circling. Yep. If I'm going to, what is, is there vegetation that's over that? Do you have a vegetation layer? Yep. It's that green one. So you can see there's there's okay. not a whole lot there. Oh, right. Uh, okay. So right here, there's some vegetation. Mm -hmm. So I know there's some vegetation there. And then I can go back to here and say, hey, there's also a hard wow. spot underneath that vegetation. So exactly. now I know that if I'm – I would venture to say that at some point, Seth Fighter has flipped up <laughs> a fish off <laughs> of this hard spot with vegetation. And, sure. and he and – he, probably had to spend a lot of time to find it out there yeah right. and and that's and that's the key you know with with any uh any lake up here that you know a lot of the minnesotans know that as soon as the ice comes off you know we're out there graphing because the grass hasn't grown in yet um obviously rocks don't move at least to my knowledge they don't move so 
you know, you can get out there early in the season and graph all the hard spots before the grass comes in. But now with these layers, you can take all this information, figure out where the hard spots are, and then just, you know, if you've got a huge um, bay full of vegetation, you can find the hard spots on that, eliminate water quickly, and just go fish those hard spots without having to graph them early in the season. There's kind of like a gold rush on uh, information right now, not fishing information on where to do or you know what to use but just on this type of stuff and it's really cool to see because what it's doing i think is creating uh educated anglers uh, yeah who, absolutely. who can then know why like I've, I've always struggled with like if i'm catching them how important is it to know why i'm catching them there like is that is that important? So I've talked to some professional anglers who are like, I really don't care why I'm catching them there. I just know that they're there. But then you talk to, to others, and I would say the vast majority of top-end guys, they want to know why they're catching them there. So when something changes, they know where to go look to relocate those fish. Right. If they don't know what they're on, then they don't know where their next logical stop is going to be. Yep. If they don't know that this is – the bank that the wind is blowing on specifically and it's only this and then they come back and it's an east wind instead of a west wind that and all this does is give the angler more information and knowledge to make educated decisions yeah this is kind of connecting all the pieces to the puzzle you know when you can combine a bottom hard hardness layer with a contour layer on top of that you've got a wind direction and wind speed layer you can see how maybe you know on a certain point in the lake if you've got mm -hmm. hard bottom mixed with vegetation and it's blown from west to east it's blown out of the west and it hits that point at a at a specific in a specific way those bait fish get piled up there and the fish are there and they're chewing or something like that yeah and you can take yeah. that and you can replicate it all around the lake especially you know you've got a lot of uh they call them like pattern lakes like you think of lakes in the ozarks if if they're on pea gravel to you know chunk rock and they're on that transition you can go and replicate that all over the place if you're able to if you're able to find that and it's very similar here in, in minnesota you know if you can if you can figure out that they're on the edge of coon tail in 15 foot of water you can go and replicate that around the lake or if they're in milfoil then you can go find that milfoil and that little little bit shallower topped out stuff but um all of this is to your point um pieces to the puzzle that help you become a better angler um and yeah exactly like you said you know it does it's a complete disservice if you're just told where the fish are um, because yeah, you'll, you'll see, you know, guys that they, you know, they might have a reputation for getting a lot of information, but as soon as they make it to, you know, a certain tournament trail or a certain level of competition where off limits and so on and so forth, you know, they're, they're going to struggle. And that's, and that's, like I said, doing yourself a disservice because you're not understanding the why of, of fishing. Uh, all you know is, how to catch him per se or where okay. to catch him. I, I will say this. Um, I was talking to a top 10 angler in the world uh, a while ago. And, uh, you know, you guys do, uh, you guys are working on a lot of stuff. Uh, I also uh, work with uh, Johnny Schultz from Fish the Moment, who's all about education. And, you know, he's part of that core tackle deal. And uh, there's certain elements of this that, these guys have been doing on their own, which is incredibly hard leg work that gives them, I don't want to like straight give it away, but there's certain things on this feature that guys in the top 10 in the world have been doing to say, okay, I need to be in this part of the lake doing this. Yep. And <laughs> now it's three clicks and they're like, what the hell? Like, I hope they're like, I hope this doesn't catch on because this is one of my edges that puts me two days ahead of everyone else was pr with practice because I can look at this and 90% know that this is the area of the lake that I need to be in. And this is kind of where and how I need to be targeting them. And they're like, man, now it's just a matter of time. It's like, it's like, it's out there now. You just have to find it. <laughs> and it was, nah. it was really, it was really interesting uh, because it's stuff that you've always said, oh, it would be nice if yeah. this existed. And this guy like is on government satellite websites, downloading, printing, <laughs> overlaying to get all this stuff in real time for top level tournaments 
Yeah. And it's like, oh, like that's the mentality. That next level mentality is I sat there and said, boy, it would be nice if this existed. He sat there and said, how can I actualize what I need? And then spent the hours and hours and hours to get what this stuff is. Yeah. So funny you you bring that up there. There was recently a pro circuit event, tackle warehouse pro circuit event on uh, uh, lacrosse here. Uh, And I listened to two of the anglers. Unsel had no idea what we were working on at the time say, you know, what would be killer (laughs) is if we had uh, contour maps with live wind direction on it like windy like the particles moving in the wind direction so i could look and see all my spots as the river winds around where what spots are getting the wind in the right direction for me and what's getting on it and we have that now and we have uh you know uh i don't know how to how to politically put this but uh in the coming days if not weeks uh the contour maps on all the lakes that we have on the app which is practically every freshwater body in the U S uh, will be the top tier maps. You can, you can uh, p- purchase on a chip or anything like that. So imagine having your iPad in your boat or your phone even, and being able to say, all right, there I'm, I'm catching them on windy points, but you can look way miles away from yourself and see the actual, you know, wind speed and wind direction all over the entire lake and duplicate a pattern really fast. So, um, it's cool to see, you know, this is just the start for all the layers. There's, there's a half dozen more layers already waiting to get uh, approval and get worked into the system. So it's the uh, premium pro cake, yeah, seven layer the, cake. Yeah. This is going to be pretty cool stuff. It'll be, in my opinion, kind of like the best way to do a little homework before you get on the water, but it absolutely has features while you're on the water to make adjustments on the fly too. So uh, Logistically, one of the advantages of having a show sponsored by Omni is you hooked me up with the code so I could see it. I have no idea. Like, what are we talking about for a year? If you want to get in on this hot premium pro action. Yeah. Uh, premium pro. So a year subscription is 49 99. So that comes, oh, that that's... comes with your map layers and yeah. it comes with uh, the premium membership uh, for those that are already premium members. Uh, the additional uh, 20 bucks is, is all it is. Yep. So you get your free shipping, no minimum. So if you're buying two yes. bags of uh, of Great Lakes finesse plastics, you get free shipping all the time. You're ten percent back. Plus, you have access to all the map layers and soon to be some of the really really cool ones coming behind it too. So, uh, yeah. Just what I need, Jamie Bruce, to have more information. Yeah, <laughs> not not like not like info, but like pertinent, helping you catch fish, like abstract weather lake info he's he's smoking everyone i expect to see him on the elite series next year heck there's just going to be a whole division a whole just like northern aluminum boat division <laughs> i might need to join that one too um it's one, one quick thing to add on that is uh so right now we've got a release for ios um android is going to be coming within either uh today or tomorrow or something like that okay. it just uh needs to get approved in the i think the google play store or something like that it should be all right show. uh so if you're on your phone and you don't have the let's say you haven't done anything you've heard heard us talk about omni and everything first thing you do you just go download the omni app yep yep then you make an account mm-hmm. yep. totally free to make an account you don't have to have anything that way you can store everything on it you get all the perks of that then once you make your account you can upgrade to Premium or premium pro premium. Yep, I, would, I would recommend premium pro and premium pro. And, uh, hold on. I, there's a reason I do a podcast that I'm not in math. You said it's what? 40 bucks a year, 40 something. 50 bucks a year. Yeah. Yep. For premium pro 30 bucks for regular premium. Oh, that's uh that's $4 a month folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll one up you here. We, uh, we updated your landing page on our site, omniefficient.com forward slash BTL. So if okay. you go visit that link, uh, we've got a premium pro button on there. That'll take you straight to the uh, premium pro. Oh, landing how about page. that? That just happened today. Yep. So good to go. You can click there and then it'll just automatically open up your app store, your Google play store. and You're good to go. There you go. Omnia O M N I a fishing.com forward slash 
Was it BTL or Bass Talk Live? It's it's BTL. It'll redirect you to that okay. to that page. Yep. Beautiful. And then you can do the Omnia. You could do the premium. It talks about the fifteen. The code BTL twenty three. Uh, to get 15% off your first order. And then uh, you get all the other benefits of it. So, Have you guys noticed? Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to try. I'm not trying to get into the business, but I am curious. You guys have made a huge concerted effort to get into this market space, uh, the online tackle retailer, by doing a lot of unique, never before done things in this space. Have you noticed growth down in the South? Uh, cause I mean, obviously you go up North and that's how I heard about it. Fishing yeah. with Adam Bartuzek and the St. Jude and all that stuff. Oh yeah. We ordered from Omnia and hella bass and all that. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you get down South and as I got to know about it, people would be like, well, what's Omnia? Have you seen a bunch of growth in the South as you've worked with elite series and as you've expanded lakes in the different regions? I mean, that's obviously got to be the ultimate goal. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, two years, I mean, realistically we've been in, you know, mass retail, at least, at least covering the country yeah. for about almost three years now. Right. Uh, the first year of the company, 70% of our sales were in the Midwest. Uh, this year uh, it's on pace to be about 30% of our sales. Uh, so that's so good, right? That's very good. It means we've spread out quite a bit around the country. We've done very well, surprisingly on the West coast. Uh, but the, the South is obviously, uh, where a lot of the bass fishing takes place. Um, but we hope to even it out, honestly, as I think, you know, I don't think it's any secret. Uh, we focused in on bass fishing initially because it is the largest consumer group. Uh, we had to prove out our operations and, and, and we also wanted good information for our anglers that are shopping by lake to learn what's actually working and techniques and stuff. So we started with the hardcore anglers in the bass fishing world, but we'll be expanding into multiple species and all that stuff soon. So I, I hope to see the geography of it not be limited by species or any part of the country. Uh, I hope to be, we're servicing everywhere soon. Anything else you guys want to get in before I leave you with a closing uh, question? No, shoot. Who's going to win this week? I want oh. both of your picks. AOY. Ooh. AOY pick really the AOY yeah. is going to come down to it's going to be Welcher Cobb cook. Let's just make things interesting. We'll do, yeah. we'll do within 52 points of the lead, which is long shot. I mean, you yeah. got to really do some stuff with like voodoo dolls to jump from <laughs> seven, yeah. seventh up uh, Welcher Cobb cook Shakur Walter, Sefuentes, or Schmidt. That's who's got within 52 points. Welcher has a uh, six-point lead over Brandon Cobb, and then Drew Cook is right there, yeah. 30 points back, which is, mm -hmm. I mean, 30 points in a 100-boat field is doable, but your destiny's out of your own hands. So who? we'll start with you, Trevor. Who you got? Man, I've, I've been a fan of this guy for, for quite a while, um, and I'd, I'd love to see him hoist and AOI and I'm going to go with Brandon Cobb. Um, okay. I, I think, uh, no, no shots fired at Kyle Welcher. Uh, he's, he's been killing it this entire year, but you know, I think Brandon Cobb's gonna, he's gonna seal the deal. Um, and in terms of who's going to win this, let's, let's get spicy. You want to go crazy. Let's get crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's go with a, a back to back kill ya Fujita double down on two trophies in, in two I like weeks. that. Mm -hmm. How do you say, you know how to say his name? Cause I say Koya. Well, you know, you, you take Japanese and uh, I mean, you look at it. So you look at the word, like the, the name Tokyo, right? So the K Y O is Kyo. Okay. So my guess is it's Kyoya. Kyoya. So, but I don't know. I could be saying it wrong. No, I'm, not I'm Japanese, going with but, that. Uh, Pete, yours. Right. I'm going full on Homer picks here, boys. Okay, well, yep. Yeah. Aoy, hit me, hit me with your Aoy pick. I, I think Cook's gonna blow everybody's mind and do some. Crazy. Really? I think Cook's gonna pull it off. You think Drew Cook is he gonna mm -hmm. be looking at him, or is he gonna actually win Angler of the Year with a spinning rod deep? That's. I, I think a mix of both. I think he's gonna do both. That would be something. Yeah, it would be, and then. What gives you this gut feeling? 
I just, you know, I look at the, the conditions. I think, I think it's going to mess with a lot of people. What's going to happen to them with this short practice. And then the, the blow days, it's going to get in people's heads. Uh, and if it gets mixed up, uh, that if they if they do cancel a day or two, uh, how this thing all works out, I, I could just I think we we need some fireworks, and I feel like they're coming. Okay, uh, something, something big happened there, and then uh, I got to go full on homer pick. Uh, I haven't picked them all year, and that's so I'm blaming myself for the tough season so far. But fighters going to the classic, he's gonna he he'll get in on points and because he won this one. So he's going to get in on points and because he won this one, and there's a good chance it'll – and then someone else will get in. Yep, so he'll double qualify. There's a lot of people that are probably not happy with Gussie. He's not holding up his end of the deal. He's down in 50th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He needs to double qualify to give – well, I guess it's the, kind of the same thing because then he <laughs> bumps someone else down there. But uh Okay. Uh, next question. Yeah. hundred pounds. We had Shakura hit a hundred pounds last time. I'm going to say absolutely no way does it hit a hundred pounds this time, just because of the weather and a shorter practice period, obviously in the nineties, but I think a hundred pounds, I don't think people understand with running with weather, with fish landing, just how hard it is to average 25 pounds a day of smallmouth out there. Yeah. I have to for four up. days. Uh, yeah. I hope we see it. Don't get me wrong. I mm -hmm. hope we see it, but I, my gut is you're right. I think it falls short of a hundred pounds this time. Yeah. Upper nineties, probably that's, that's going to be my guess. 96 to 98 or something like that. And final question. What bait is it one on? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's not a mixed bag. You got a lot of guys who, I mean, you have to kind of, you, you've seen a little bit, but you kind of got to go full, full on, especially uh, in late August. I think it, I think it'll be a one or two bait deal, but primarily when we're rolling out of this thing, are you going to be scrambling to get something none of us have ever heard of? Is it going to be a willow cat deal? Pulch <laughs> Pete? I don't know. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I have a feeling it's going to be something pretty small. Uh, I, I'll, I would say that, that, that three inch scented jerk shad a three and a half inch might be a player. I can promise you this much. Uh, there's a lot of people fishing with that Great Lakes finesse stuff at that place because they ordered it all from us. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Great Lakes finesse pulls out another victory. I'm going to go with that. What uh, what percentage of the elite field do you think has some Great Lakes finesse in their boat out of 103 guys? Just give me a ballpark number. 40%. Forty percent. So you think sixty or forty guys, forty out of the hundred have, and I don't think many of us had heard of that thing before this year even started. I'd heard about it a little because of because uh, I'm buddies with Travis, but I didn't know if it was just another one of his conspiracy deals or what. It's a real deal. I will tell you, it's forty percent right now after day one of practice. It might be sixty percent. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Depends on All how right. practice goes today. Yeah. All right. I always enjoy it, Trevor. Uh, Pete. Heck, I've gotten to see. I got to see Pete at uh, at ICAST. I got to see mm. Pete at the media event. Your yep. audio was fabulous for that show. I oh, didn't realize we crushed. <laughs> you, you were a little little choppy on the signal. Did not realize that. That's that's on me. Yeah. Uh. But that was a good show there. So I've gotten to see a lot of Pete. Uh, Trevor, we still got to get on the water sometime. Come on up. I know you haven't fished much this year, you're saying. I haven't. No, I've uh, boat's been out of commission for, for a while. And uh, I just I actually just got it back last week. So uh, pretty cool. You also have a going. kid now? I do have a kid. Uh, she just turned one. She's about one and half a month. So she's uh. She takes up a lot of my time, but it's uh, something I wouldn't uh, trade for the world for sure. One year old in a broken boat leads at a job, a full time job <laughs> that's expanding. Yeah. That's, those are, that's the three strikes of random fishing that's, trips. <laughs> that's 100% correct. All right, guys. Like I said, always appreciate it. Always enjoy talking to you guys. Appreciate the support of, uh, of BTL. It was like a six month process to get this thing done. And I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting into when I was working with Omni and they're like, well, can we come on 
and like talk about like some stuff that's going on. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe like once or twice a year. And then after we did it once, I was like, yeah, come on back every like month or two, because uh, I think you <laughs> add a lot to uh, to BTL, uh, both knowledge and I just like talking to you guys. So we appreciate the support. Yep. All right. Feeling appreciate mutual. it, guys. Pete, Trevor, have fun up there in Minnesota. See you, everybody. See you. Adios. Oh, there Leaving he is. me up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I did that before. I was trying to do that. But uh, all right, that was uh, Omnia Fishing. Uh, announcement on who we have as a guest. One of my favorite guys. Uh, when we come back, we'll take our final break of the show. When we come back, it is Tuesday, August 22nd. This is BTL. We'll be back after this. Having confidence in your tackle while on the water is one of the main things to success, in my opinion. In the last couple of years with Denali, I've had just that. From anything from spinning rods, casting rods, tungsten products, even now to casting and spinning reels, I have the confidence to go out there and get the job done and know that all my equipment is going to handle it and do it just the way I want it. The thing about Denali is you've got great quality products at a great price point, so make sure you check them out. Shoreline Boat and RV, dock rash, storm damage, collision repair, that deep scratch or gouge from trying to access that secret creek. Shoreline Boat and RV can get your prize possession back in mint condition and looking good on the water, fast. All repairs are done in-house, so they're able to get your boat or RV back to brand new, quickly. All Shoreline's work comes with a rock-solid warranty. Find out more at ShorelineBoatAndRV.com, Kansas City, Austin, and Tulsa. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. The great thing about the new Sensation Soft Plastics from Big Bite Baits, heavily scented, super soft, buoyant, comes in seven great new shapes. I've got a couple of them of my signature series, the Cliffhanger Worm and the Ramtail Craw. Great for a flipping jig, football jig, swim jig, all that. Several other great shapes. Really excited about it. We've worked over the last year. Catches fish all over the country, and I think it's going to catch fish for people everywhere you try it. The Spro Little John crankbait has been around for almost 15 years and it is one of my go-to crankbaits whenever I need a fish in the boat so you can never have enough new colors. That's why Spro is coming out with a handful of new colors including Pearl Shad which has this bleached out white look but it's got this pearlescent really really pretty. We've got Copper Shad which looks amazing in the water. It's got that purple flake on the back really really pops in the water. And then if you want some real pop, we've got Sparkle Shad, nothing but sparkles all over this thing. And then last but not least, we've got the Matte Sexy Shad, just a really different looking color for a crankbait. So you want to give them a little different look, that Matte Sexy Shad is definitely the one to go with. All these colors are available in the original Little John and the MD. All right, wrapping things up here on a Tuesday. Tomorrow's show, Gray Buck. BPT Angler, uh, one of the good guys on tour, longtime uh, MLF, FLW, Invitational, Pro Circuit, Tour, whatever you want to call him. Uh, the guy can catch him. Uh, has been close before to making the BPT, but uh, got the job done uh, this year. So Gray Buck will be on. Also, uh, absolute, uh, absolutely catches him up north. So he'll he'll have some insight for us on the St. Lawrence River, uh, and what's going on up north. I'll be interested to get his take on 
Damiki rigging, moping, hanging a jig, however you want to call it, because his strength is that smallmouth fishing. And like I said, that is a new a new thing or a thing that has been kept quiet that's doing really good up there. I think he was one of the only guys that I've ever heard of. Speaking of the Great Lakes, five of them, which I learned. Thank you, Pete. I believe last year or the year before, Gray Buck caught a four-pound smallmouth out of all five of the Great Lakes in the same summer, which is pretty freaking cool. So we'll talk to Gray. And then on Thursday, Frank Scalish. Uh, show with Frank will be back on. I think he's actually been out smallmouth fishing, so we'll talk to him about that. And then we'll have the next time we're live, we'll have a angler of the year. We'll have uh, the classic field uh, almost set. There's still three more Bassmaster Opens, Watts Bar, Lake of the Ozarks, and Florida. Sean, I, I knew there were around five Great Lakes. I just, I mean, you've got Huron, Superior, Erie, Michigan, and Ontario. That's the five, yeah. And then the sixth one is Champlain. So, but that's all we got for today. Oh, I do want to mention before everyone goes, listen, if you want to hear more live stuff, 4 p.m. Central Time today, August 22nd, go watch the replay. If you're listening to this on iTunes or watching the replay, we are going live from Andrew Upshaw's YouTube channel, Andrew Upshaw Fishing. It's the Open Pros Pick'em. If you listen to what uh, we do before every Elite Series tournament, Andrew's done a really good job of building up a, a listener base and some really cool stuff there with Ish Monroe, Todd Castledine, myself, and Andrew Upshaw. We have talked Andrew into going live at 4 p.m. for our final open pros pick of fantasy. Now here's the thing you guys don't realize that show is not live. It is recorded out of the eight that we've done this year. I think we've had to restart three of them. So all 40% of them because it goes off the rails so fast and we end up yelling at each other. Or guys end up going down a, going down a path that shouldn't go live. Andrew is legit nervous about this. Because it's the last one of the year. Ish and I are grumpy because of our teams the last couple of weeks. We went from the penthouse to the outhouse. Todd's going to be cocky. And who knows what else is going to happen. But 4 p.m. Central Time, Open Pros Pick'em, live on Andrew Upshaw's YouTube channel. Check it out. I'm excited for this one. And uh, yeah, I do. I That's a... Great point, Mark. He said, poor Matt's going to get roasted. I don't know how that became a thing, but I get absolutely obliterated on that show from Todd and from Ish, mainly Ish. Ish just likes to pour it on. And then Todd just sits there and exit on. But it is what it is. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy the feedback on that show. So uh, that's all we got. Like I said, 4 p.m. today, Central Time, Andrew Upshaw's. Tomorrow, Gray Buck, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Head over to Omnia Fishing if you haven't. Support the companies that support BTL, allow you to do this. I had said something that said, man, everyone's got a subscription base. Yeah, there's a lot of time, energy, effort to go in uh, that goes into all of this content, all of this material. Very thankful for the partnership with Omnia. Sign up for uh, Premium and then Premium Pro orders before 1 p.m. ship the same day, and then you also get a bunch of different uh, perks for being a premium or a premium pro member. But that's all we got for BTL today on a Tuesday. I got to go fix my lawnmower belt. That'll be a fun one. Should be a five-minute job. Guaranteed it takes me over an hour. We'll see you tomorrow.